Recently commissioned, the Type 001A is the first aircraft carrier ever manufactured in China. This warship represents not only a tremendous achievement for China, who now arguably has the strongest fleet it has operated since the time of Zheng He, but also a paradigm shift in the global balance of power. In 2017 her name was not formally announced. There were some internet speculation on the naming of this Chinese warship. However it turned out that this new aircraft carrier is named the Shandong. The possibility of building an aircraft carrier has been pondered by Beijing for many long years, and the nation's increasing ability to manufacture commercial vessels of ever greater size and displacement has no doubt tempted the People's Liberation Army Navy plan to propose building one for some time. Aircraft carriers were a contentious issue in Chinese politics however, due to political and strategic preferences for a larger, more dispersed, and less expensive force of smaller warships, but as China's economy and industry grew, so too did the realization that they really could operate such large warships. The first serious proposal for a Chinese aircraft carrier was made on March 11, 1987 by the Commission of Science, Technology and Industry for National Defense, along with a new class of nuclear attack submarines meant to succeed the Han class, which eventually resulted in the Shine class. This proposal also had the blessing of Lu Huaqing, the plan commander, who was also an outspoken advocate of aircraft carrier development. The government soon accepted this proposal, as indicated by the formation of a training school for carrier aviators at the Guangzhou Naval Academy in May of 1987, though the timeline of China's aircraft carrier program suggests that they opted to proceed cautiously. In April of 1987, the plan launched and recovered a JA-2, Finback B, on the flight deck of the former Australian aircraft carrier HMAS Melbourne, which had been stricken and sold for scrap to a Chinese firm. The J-82 was far from ideal for this purpose, so its success no doubt reinforced the plan's determination to develop a carrier of their own. This was further reinforced by Chinese negotiations in 1995-96 with the Spanish firm Empresa Nacional Bazan, over the possibility of purchasing blueprints created by that company for their SAC-200 and SAC-220 aircraft carrier designs. While China ultimately didn't purchase the blueprints or build a similarly designed carrier, they did nonetheless pay several million US dollars in consulting fees to Bazan and purchase a number of key technologies for building carriers. China in the meantime had been actively seeking to acquire a Kuznetsov-class aircraft carrier from Ukraine, the incomplete Variag. This ultimately came to pass in 2001, when she was finally towed to China, though the ex Variag had spent nearly another decade before work to complete her was initiated in 2011, and she was finally commissioned as the Liaoning in 2012. Another important development occurred in 2007, when China purchased for carrier landing systems from Russia, which was confirmed in an August 2008 press conference held by Mr. Huang Chang, the Speaker of the Commission of Science, technology and industry for national defense. However, the poor condition of the Liaoning has relegated her to serving primarily as a training ship, so it was clear that a different warship was needed to provide China with a plausible carrier aviation capability. 2011 was a watershed event for the development of Chinese carriers, due to several occurrences in that year. The plan also constructed a mock-up of an aircraft carrier's flight deck in near Wuhan, complete with a ski jump bow and arrestor cables, for training future carrier pilots. Later, the PLA chief of the general staff Chen Bingda formally announced that China had in fact decided to manufacture their own aircraft carrier, but declined to provide further details until it was completed. A month later the Academy of Military Sciences said China reported to the plan that at least three carriers were required to protect China's maritime interests. Details of the Type 001A's own development still remain obscured to the public, so it is not known when the program actually began when the final design was settled upon, or when construction was finally authorized and funded. Similarly, it is also unclear exactly when construction of the Type 001A carrier began, as some components might have been assembled before her keel was laid, but she was laid down on March 26, 2015. Little was said of the program from any official Chinese sources, so speculation and photographs of the incomplete vessel spread like wildfire across the internet. Work proceeded at an astonishingly fast pace, and the Type 001A carrier was launched with great fanfare on April 26, 2017. She already has a pennant number of 17. Under the U.S. Navy's hull prefix system, this would make her CV-17, but no name has formally been announced. Work is not yet complete, and as of May 2017, the new carrier has yet to even go to sea under her own power, let alone complete the remainder of her outfittings and complete her sea trials. The Type 001A is expected to enter operational service with the plan in 2019. Although the Type 001A is clearly derived from the Kuznetsov class, 
much of her architecture is entirely new. Notably, her flight deck is wider, broader, and has a larger area and less sweep at the leading edges. The portside leading edge is also significantly longer, and now spans nearly the entire width of the angled deck runway likely due to experience from touch-and-go landings on the Liaoning. The conning tower is similar in architecture, but much shorter, which frees up more deck space for aircraft. The funnel atop the conning tower is also significantly smaller. The side balconies upon which weapons, sensors, and other fixtures rest are much larger as well, which hints of the possibility of much larger weapons, or more of them, being fitted in the future. The ski jump is still at a 12-degree angle, but the rise overrun is much more abrupt on the Type 001A. There are still two exhaust deflectors for launching aircraft behind the forecastle, but rather than one on the forward angled deck, as on the Kuznetsov and Liaoning, there are two, enabling the Type 001A to launch aircraft more rapidly, and there are three bell-shaped elevators rather than two rectangular elevators. A bulbous bow is fitted, as in the Kuznetsov class, but it has a more rectangular nose. The screws on the Type 001A are also less staggered than those on the Kuznetsov class. The greatest difference is the sheer size of the Type 001A, as her increased length and broader slight deck makes her nearly the same size as the colossal Nimitz-class nuclear aircraft carriers operated by the US Navy. The composition of the Type 001A has not been published, though it is obvious from various photographs taken of her during construction that she is primarily steel in structure. It is likely that some composites have been included on her exterior finish to reduce the overall radar cross-section. The full extent of the electronics and electronic countermeasures ECMs, planned for the Type 001A has not yet been revealed, but a number of systems, or their provisions, have already been noticed on board by observers. These include the Type 346, Dragonite, C-band and S-band active electronically scanned array, ASA, radar, which is also used on the Type 052C and Type 052D class destroyers, three Type 347G rice bowl, I-band fire control radars, an ECM suite that includes jamming and ESM systems, 424 tube and 216 tube decoy launchers, and a control and computation subsystem, CCS. The propulsion system of the Type 001A is a throwback to an earlier era, with eight oil-fired boilers supplying steam to four geared turbines, with a combined output of 200,000 shop. The top speed is reportedly 31 kts, 57 kilometers per hour. It is unclear whether this is derived from the same propulsion systems used in the Kiev class and Kuznetsov class carriers, if so, its safety and reliability margins will likely be quite poor. The fuel bunkerage of the Type 001A had not been published, but it reportedly carries enough to allow a range of 14,000 nanometers, 25,928 kilometers, at an economic cruising speed of 14 kts, 26 kilometers per hour. Two large rudders are used to steer the Type 001A, but her turning circle still has yet to be determined. Like the Kuznetsov class that inspired it, the Type 001 launches aircraft using an upward curved ski jump bow and recovers them using an angled deck and a series of arrestor cables strung across the fantail. This design scheme is generally referred to as a short takeoff but arrested recovery stow bar, configuration. No catapults are fitted, which limits the payload of fuel, ordnance, and other stores an aircraft can carry while being launched, but this also allows all the steam from the boilers to be used for heating and propulsion. The flight deck is 304.5 m long and up to 72 m broad at its widest, with a total area of 14800 m. Three deck edge elevators are fitted, which are 20 by 15 m in size, and capable of safely supporting up to 40 tons. The hull contains a single hangar deck, which is 153 m long, 26 m wide, and 8 m tall. The total aviation fuel bunkerage is reportedly 2,500 tons. Up to 44 aircraft can be carried by the Type 001, including 32 fighters and 12 helicopters. At present, the planned air wing consists of 32 J 15 Air Superiority fighters, 6 Z 18 FS anti submarine and anti ship helicopters, 4 Z 18 JS airborne early warning helicopters, and 2 Z 9 CS utility helicopters. The primary weapon system on board the Type 001A is the HHQ 10 surface to air missile. SAM system, export name FL-3000N, which is similar in design to the US-made RIM-116 RAM system. The launcher is also similar to that of the RAM, with a rectangular launcher sporting 24 sealed launch tubes. It rotates through 360 degrees, and the oscillating design allows for very high elevation and depression. Developed from the TY-90 air-to-air missile, HHQ-10 is an unusual missile similar in size and proportions to a man-portable air defense system, manpads, design, but with aerial, ground vehicle, and naval applications in mind, and two guidance systems in each missile, a passive radar homing system, useful against defending aircraft and missiles that require active radar during the final phase of the attack, 
and an infrared homing system. It is 2M long with a 120 mm diameter, weighs about 20 kg, and carries a 3 kg HEFRAG warhead with an infrared proximity fuse. Upon launch, the HHQ-10 achieves a flight speed of Mach 2, to 450 km per hour, within seconds, and is usable at ranges as short as only 500 m, with an effective range of 9 km, though it is only effective against supersonic targets at a range of 6 km. Short-range infrared guided missiles typically have very high probability of kill, PK, ratios of up to 30%, though the short reach of the HHQ-10 would allow little time to react to threats, and far too short a reach for the Type 001A to use these missiles to protect other ships, and its small warhead might necessitate multiple successive hits to destroy some targets. However, it can be used to engage most missiles, helicopters, and aircraft alike. The last line of defense for the Type 001A is the Type 1130-30mm Close-In Weapon System CIWS, a further development of the earlier Type 730 CIWS, which, in turn, was derived from the Western goalkeeper CIWS, which is armed with the same GAU-13 gun as used on the A-10 Thunderbolt II. The Type 1130 is an even more monstrous weapon, trading the original 7-barrel, 4,000 RPM 30mm rotary cannon for a new model with 11 barrels and up to 11,000 RPM. First seen on the aircraft carrier Liaoning, little else is known of the Type 1130, save that it is one of the most devastating anti-aircraft weapons ever fielded. It is stated by the plan that the PK ratio of the Type 1130 against hypersonic anti-ship missiles is in excess of 90%, though this claim is highly suspect. Historically, anti-aircraft guns with modern fire control systems have a PK ratio closer to 50% against subsonic targets in a single engagement. This is also notable for being the highest PK ratio ever achieved by any type of weapon against airborne targets in combat. Though even by a very conservative estimate, the Type 1130 is still easily more capable than any other CIWS in service to date. A total of 54 HHQ-10 SAMs are carried, but the amount of 30mm shells stowed for the Type 1130 CIWS has not been published. It should also be noted that this may not end up being the complete arsenal of the Type 001A by the time she is commissioned, as the Kuznetsov class that her design is based on are some of the most heavily armed warships built in modern times. Though nowhere near as well armored as the aircraft carriers of late World War II, the Type 001A has been noted for a number of protection features omitted from all other modern carriers. Notably, the magazines and aviation fuel bunkers are protected on all sides by armor and a triple-hull underwater protection system is fitted. It is unknown if more internal protection features are fitted or planned. Sea trials of the Type 001A began in 2018. This aircraft carrier was commissioned with the plan in 2019. Interestingly in 2018, shortly before commissioning of the Type 001A aircraft carrier, Japan announced that due to the rapid buildup of the Chinese Navy it will convert its two operational Azumo-class helicopter carriers in order to accommodate F-35 fixed-wing aircraft. So Japan's these warships will effectively become light aircraft carriers. Though these two Japan's warships are much smaller than China's aircraft carriers. It is unclear exactly how great the program cost of the Type 001A is, though both she and the Type 002 still under construction are projected to cost a combined $9 billion. In all likelihood, it is almost certain that each of these vessels by themselves cost less than $7 billion, which is the unit cost of the US Navy's Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Given that the Ford class now under development already costs more than twice as much as the Nimitz-class, and most of the program's expenses still have yet to be revealed, there is something to be said for building carriers with conventional propulsion and design features.